Hey, what's up guys? So in today's video, I will be talking about the different types of presentation I use while bass fishing. So, in today's video, I will be talking about structured jig fishing, topwater fishing, and last but not least, swim bait fishing. And how I like to present these baits in a different brand that I use for these types of fishing. Out of the three, my favorite is swim bait fishing. Because no matter where you're at, or what time of the year it is, bass will always eat swim bait. There's always bait fish around the area, no matter what lake or pond you're fishing in. So always keep that in mind. If they're not eating Sankos, Craws, or even Topwater, switch to a swim bait. And my five favorite brands when it comes to plastics are Deep Creek Lures, Yamato Baits, Ribbit Frog, Mega Bats, and last but not least, Gambler. The reason I love these five brands are because durability, sense, and the way that they perform underwater are just unbelievable. So we're going to go into more detail of them in just a sec. Hey guys, so when it comes to structured jig fishing and craw fishing, these are my three favorite, four favorite plastics. Deep Creek Lure, Yamato Baits, Gambler, they will buy Gambler as well. And I like to use them with a half ounce swing jig, a 3 8 ounce swing jig, a 3 16 ounce stand up jig, and a 1 8 ounce finesse jig. Along with that, my favorite weight size for structured jigs are half ounce and 3, 3 8 ounce. This here is a 3 8 ounce and it has a red bottom and a brownish top to it. And I use that all throughout the year. Along with that, I like to use greener ones, black and blue. So how I like to rig these baits. When it comes to meteor baits, I like to use heavier baits because it's harder for them to sink. So this, a very meaty bait by Deep Creek Lures, I would use the half ounce swing jig by Strike King. So how I rig it, I punch it through the end of the hook, punch it through the bottom, slide it through until it reaches the top. Once it reaches the top, I measure it just like that, and I punch it straight through, just like that. Make sure when you rig your baits on swing jigs that they are centered right through the middle and that they aren't wavy. See how that's very straight and straight through the middle. That gives your bait up the perfect presentation when it comes to stricter jig fishing. The fish will not eat if there's anything wrong with your bait, if they're slightly misaligned or slightly curvy. Along with that, I like to use the stand-up jig. I like to use these with smaller jigs, trailers. So example, you model bait. I would use this, I would screw it on there, I don't know if you can see that, screw it on there, it's going to take me a while. Once it's screwed on there, I make sure that the top is up, obviously. Just like that. See how the little eyes are up? That's how I would go. Measure it. So that would go straight through there. Just like that. Well, see how that's a little bendy? You want to bend the spring down. There you go. Here's the ledge of the floor of the water. And it's going to stand up just like that. The fish love these. It's always standing. It's going to slowly sink down. But it gives us amazing action in the water. Finesse jigs. How I use these. I use these when the fish are very slow eating, especially in the winter or springtime when they're bed fishing and they're very picky. So, I use small, big jig, big craws when it comes to these types of fishing. I punch it through. As you can see, this hook and weight is extremely small for this type of bait. I punch it through and hook it right there. The reason I use a very small weight and hook for these types of big craws is that you want your bait to be swimming very slow and steady straight through the water column when it comes to bass fishing. The fish are very slow eating when it comes to winter time and they won't eat things that are moving fast. They're looking for slow, fast opportunity. And it takes them a very long time to eat the crawls. So you want to make sure that it's heavy but it has lots of action. See how it has very wobbly action. Imagine that in the water. Okay, next thing I would use. Springtime fishing. This is my favorite type of fishing during springtime when the fish are bedding. Or 3 8 ounce structure jigs. Usually I just fish them straight structure jig, no trailer. But on exceptions, sometimes they just won't eat strict jig. They will want that extra scent that the trailers come with. So what I do is, I grab through the hook, I look at it, okay. Example, it's gonna be hooked right through there. So I pass through the hook, through to the trailer, I make sure it's almost halfway, and I poke it through. I poke it through, I have a little hook thingy right there. So you pass it through, just like that. You wanna make sure, that, again, when it comes to rigging any types of bait, you want to make sure that your hook is straight through the middle and not off the side. Along with that, you want it to be straight and not wavy. 
right there it's a little wavy so you want to fix that perfect now the fish will eat it and they will eat it without hesitating how i like to fish structure jigs swing jigs stand-up jigs and if i can find the last one finesse jigs the way i used to fish these are i jerk it once or twice up and then let it sink once it hits bottom i wait two to three seconds then i lift the rod tip up and let it sink again. Along with these, I always, always fish fluorocarbon. Doesn't matter what brand it is, I usually fish for between 20 and 30 pound test. The reason, reason being is that these fish are usually picky, so they won't really eat braid. I know a lot of people would think, oh, this kid's really dumb, the fish will obviously eat braid. Yes, they will eat braid. The difference is, they won't eat as many times. Usually fluorocarbon, they will eat, say, 20 times. Braid, they'll eat five times. You'll still catch fish, but you'll catch less quantity. Okay guys, so now I'm going to be talking about topwater. These are my two favorite topwaters. The Mega Best Pop Max, this thing is $25, but it's absolutely worth it. The quality and the details on this thing is ridiculous. As you can see, it has holes through the gills so that the bubbles squirt straight through out of it. On occasions I use this, since it's very expensive, I use this on open waters where there's no trees and little vegetation so I don't get snagged and lose this lure. But Throughout everything, I like to use the root frog. There's three sizes I like to use. The bullfrog, the little frog, not the little, the regular frog, and the baby frog. The different hooks I use with this are the root frog dual hooks. I like to use these because it gives the extra hook advantage other than the single hook. I use this with the bullfrog and the regular frog. For the little frog, it's a little too small, so the hooks just poke straight throughout it and don't have a good presentation. So how I would rig this. The bullfrog, I usually use the double hooks. I go, I screw it on there with the twist lock and I get it all the way to the end. I measure it and I poke it right through the bottom. You want to make sure that it's even, you distribute it. Sometimes it takes a while when I'm rigging these fit, see, right there. When I'm rigging these frogs it usually takes me like two to minutes to rig the dual hook because you want to make sure that it's equally centered from each side of the frog. You don't want it to be off to the right too much or off to the left too much. Along with that, you do not want these hooks to be penetrated out. So what you do is you lift the bait and slowly poke it through to make it more weedless. See that? It's not weedless. Right there. Just like that. You want it to be in stealth mode so that you don't get snagged. But at the same time, you don't want it to be poking through much and to the bait so that you don't lose hook appreciation. Different brands I use. That's the Ribbit Frog Dual Hook. Along with that, I use the Tapered Hook. This is the 3.0. I use the 3.0 Owner Hook and the 1.0 Owner Hook. I use these two for the baby frogs, and I use the 3.0 and the 3.0 for the regular size. With this one, the Tapered Hook, same thing. I put it straight through the nose to the end of that, whatever you call that, the end of the hook. Then you slide it through onto the end. You want to do this once you're tied up because you want the line not to be within the frog. And you measure it, so that seems about right, just like that. I don't know if you can see it, the hook pops right through there. It has amazing presentation, and hookup ratio is really good with these hooks. That's why I like to use them. Along with these hooks, the only thing I don't like about these hooks, to be honest with you, when you hook a fish, since it doesn't have the twist lock, this end usually tends to rip, and you have to change your frog every single time. The difference between the tapered hook and the twist lock is that you can hook about like seven fish and not need a new frog. With the tapered hook, you need a new frog. Same thing with twist lock. You twist it, it's faster, easier, more convenient, and you don't lose as many frogs. You twist it, measure it, hook it straight through, and boom, right through the center. It's perfectly even, and you're ready to go. Same thing with these little baby frogs. I like to use this everywhere. It's my favorite size. And I usually keep about like 20 of these in my bait boxes because I go through them like crazy. I use like the pearl bottom or the green bottom. The two colors I use most. And same thing. Twist it on. Believe it or not, these little frogs, I've caught like 8 pounders on them. The fish absolutely love the baby frog, especially during frog season. And the fish are eating top water like crazy. That's usually spring. Just like that. Perfectly aligned. And the hook size doesn't really matter for these little guys since they're very small and the fish are just going to eat it. Hooks are going to trigger down and hooks it right through the fish's mouth. 
And that's just about it when it comes to frog fishing. I also like to use a smaller leader. This is 30 pound. I would switch from 30 pound to 15 pound. Max 20 pound. Because you don't want your leader to make a ripple through the, the water. Alright, so we're going to go to the next bait fish. Swim bait fishing. Okay guys, so the last type of fishing I like to do is swim bait fishing. The two brands I use is Mega Bass and Gambler. This is the Gambler. Little easy, easy, and big easy. Along with that, I like to use the 3 inch, the 4 inch, which is not here, and the 5 inch spark shad made by Mega Bass. Always, I use weighted hooks by Mostad. The 1 16th ounce adjustable weight, along with that, I either use the 3 8 ounce bullet weight or the half ounce bullet weight. When it comes to the 3 inch spark shad or the Gambler, little easy, I use this specific weighted hook that is made by Savage Gear. It was intended for the Savage Gear Craw. Let's see if I can find it real quick. And it's right here. It was intended for this craw, but it didn't do very good action. So instead of using it for this, I started using them for swim baits and they work absolutely amazing. Here's one that's very pre-rigged and you can see how good it looks on that swim bait. It looks pretty good in my opinion. And it does very good underwater. So how I rig this are usually when I stick from swim baits below four inches, I use the three eighth ounce bullet weight with, well, where did I go? A one, one oh mustad hook. When I stick to five inch swim baits, I use the five oh mustad hook. So same thing, I grab these swim baits, just put it straight down the center, you twist it in, and these are very good for any types of fish. Right through the middle. And you want this twist lock to be on top. Let's see, a little more in. And boom, perfect. You measure the hook, so it's gonna poke straight through there. See, okay. Once you measure it, you poke it straight through the middle, and out, just like that. You wanna adjust it, perfect. It ha the Mega Bass Spark Shad has little indentations on the top, I don't know if you can see it there in the video, but they're made to put in the tip of the hook in there. And it's supposed to cause, to make it weedless when you're fish fishing thick vegetation, or place with, with lots, of, lots of branches. The other thing I'd like to use are the three inch by Mega Bass. Same thing, I use the Savage Gear 1-0 crawd hook. And once it's aligned perfectly, I measure it. Ah, fuck. And focus straight through. See, I messed up. You do not want your swim bait to look like that. You readjust it. Once it's perfectly aligned, then you're ready to go. These Savage uh, savage Gear, these Mega Bass Spark Shad work good for anything when it comes to bass fishing, tarpon fishing, or even snook fishing. So, I would recommend this for any type of fishing out there. They're amazing looking, they're super realistic, and they have salted salts within the body of the fish, which are slowly released while you're fishing. Gambler. When it comes to Gambler, I like to use the Purple Haze, the Florida the 5.0, and the Copperfield. These are the three colors I have best luck in when it comes to gamblers. And I use the same thing. When it comes to the Big Easy, I use the 5.0. And when it comes to the Little Easy and Easy, I use the 1.0 with either a half ounce or a 3 8 ounce bullet weight. Along with that, as always, I always tend to fish with fluorocarbon or monofilament. And I just have better luck with it. So. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for other videos.